Okay, I want to talk about vocabulary, use, use and slang, and what words mean to me might not be what they mean to you, and why. I think it's an interesting part of sociology. I really do slang. For real, it's it says a lot about the culture that we use it. So, if we're gonna do a sociology, a sociological analysis of me, we would say, okay. She grew up in Marin, California, amongst, who is that? That's the people who work in San Francisco or maybe are, you know, um, some from somewhere a little bit more affluent that migrate there. And so there's a lot of money, there's a lot of education, there's a lot of human rights and interests. And um, and so that's the background. And then, and then I moved to like a liberal hick town. <laughs> yeah, a liberal hick town that thinks it's so cool because they have like the Olive Festival downtown or like they're, you know, fucking whatever. And they think they're so cool. And, um, uh, there's some good things about them as well, but it's... And so, and then you have Southern California slang influencing Northern California slang and vice versa. You have coastal influence of being the influencers. It's the coast that influence the middle, not the other way around. <laughs> no, not really. And um, so the coast shaped that. For the nation, they were the trendsetters, and so we, and because we're on the cutting edge, we also, we understand some of each other's jargon and some of each other's art, and you know, um, there's that, that as well. If you're, if you're really up on it, then you see that relationship. Um. So. And I'm, and I'm, I have to be honest, that really relates directly mainly to LA and New York being, that's the competitors. New York wouldn't say so, um, but LA thinks of New York when they think of who, who else might be better than where we live. And then they go, oh wait, I'm by poolside. <laughs> I win. I have better weather and I don't have hot bags of garbage and claustrophobia. I have like a yard, like a poodle, you know. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I prefer California, but um, but then I've only been to New York for one day, so I don't know. I'm sure it's very. I'm sure there's so much to it. Um. So when you look at the influence of my, where my slang com came from, it's from. I got my slang first when I was first developing language, being a kid, like you know, seven to whatever it was fifth grade I had cultural influence and I had cultural relativity so I had valley girl stuff going on we were all talking like valley girls at the time yeah everybody was kind of doing that we just kind of like say like like and like hit cars and you know like that's oh, really stupid right now you know just like just a tone like a sarcastic tone and little bit of attitude in that and we just kind of it's a little bit riot girly coming off the tail end of that and so and you're looking at the older kids and I was hanging out with the older kids too so you're getting their kind of influence and those older kids are coming off of the 80s influence so that's the, the girls that are like ew what a bot caver I mean I me with a spoon it's like those chicks like the more hardcore version and then, and then you've got the 90s version and then you go to the odds and so when you look at where the foundations of my, uh, how I speak came to be, it's in that range, and it's in that topography, it's in that demographic, which was largely white, but really, Marin's pretty damn white, and then so is Sonoma, although Latino and white, okay, and, um, So, yeah, um, 
and it's a very split town and so you have a little bit of that kind of like there's sometimes you guys are like she has a little bit of like um a fuego uh something a um Picante, like a little bit something. Um, I'll pick the guy. <laughs> Just like, um, something, a little bit of uh, Hispanic something. Yeah, that was in my town all over. So it's kind of like you're getting that from kids in schools so as you hear, or you know, you get a little bit of that slang coming in, and then, or in the town, especially on the Agua Caliente side as opposed to the Sonoma side and that division is not real but very much drawn on purpose so that you know the difference and one's poor and one's one's poor and mixed and the other is white and rich pretty much and I was on the white rich side so um but also lived on the fringes of Agua Caliente yeah right near the sheriff's office actually um and so anyways um What I'm saying is, back then we weren't PC, so when I learned my language, you asked me to authentically speak as me, and that was a hard choice. You asked for it, for me to really not be a politician, to not polish any edges, to really just speak from the heart. That's what you asked for, and that was a really hard choice for me, because the hardest choice I had to do is, if I use certain words, I might mean it as not with hatred. And you might laugh at it because it's hatred. And so that was the, it's like you're perpetuating hatred with your words if you're not careful. So that was a hard choice. But I came to find that I should just speak as me because that's what you asked for. And it's part of radical honesty. So I don't really believe, I do and don't believe in PC stuff. I don't believe in just trying to use hateful words to incite a hurtful or hateful reaction. Um, but I also don't believe that if we can't speak authentically as ourselves, we'll never move forward with an understanding. You need to know where the other person's true they're coming from and not a defensive, watered-down, apologetic person. Either. Because I think when you really, if you kind of judge intention over use of a word, you can see, is this person really racist or are they really sexist or are they really homophobic or what's happening here. So, for example, when I was growing up, they'd say, that's so gay. But they didn't mean anything about gay bashing. No, that's not the point. The point is, like, that's okay. That's just, it's gay. And now that's really offensive to say, but realize that's, like, when I grew up, that's, like, it was everywhere. Um, and I'm not, like, saying that that's cool to talk like that. I'm just saying, you know, for example... I'm just showing you the barometer of how much less PC my generation was than it is today. And, you know, people are just, there are just a lot more PC now. And that's cool. And that's really fine. Um, but, you know, um, I don't know. That's not meant, I've been very clear over and over that that's not meant with any malice towards the LGBT community at all. Of which I'm only an ally. No, no, not gay at all. Um, but I feel that um, being overly PC is, I don't know, a, uh, a hindrance to speaking from the heart. I really do. And so there's been times that I'm jarring. I think sometimes... I think I have a defiance with that. There's a there's a point to my swearing um, that maybe I'm over attached to, I guess. But um, there's a point to that freedom. But anyways, um, so yeah, so for example, of being you know way less PC. I'm gonna warning, trigger warning. If you're gonna be triggered, we're gonna talk about words now, swear words. Bitch and cunt don't probably mean as much to y me as to you. Cunt is something that 
probably because of my travels, probably because the majority of my friends were um, not either not American citizens um, or not or one ge generation removed from wherever they were from around the globe, really. Um, the majority of my friends were foreign or at least very close to foreign. And I mean, I don't think that's an accident. Um, <laughs> no, because I myself am that one generation removed foreign. Uh, so that kind of makes sense. And um, because my mom is European. So, um, you know, there's those influences and like I've traveled a lot. There are a lot of you know, like, say, British people are everywhere when you're traveling, and they all carry with them their slang, and, um, and you can, and, like, kind in, um, like, the UK, it's not really that big of a deal, and also, in my generation, because I'm coming off that mm, kind of almost rebelliously not PC generation, um, majority of my female friends said cunt. <laughs> like, like, as you want to use in context. Yeah, that that chick is really cunty right now. Use it in a sense. I did. She's being really cunty. Yeah, it means that she's being the neighbor bitch. <laughs> That's what it means. But people are like, <gasps> like older generations or people that don't understand the context or maybe, you know, d just different or didn't catch that wave of where I'm from might be really offended by this. But I'm like, uh, okay. It's like, it is worse than a bitch, but it's not like nearly as offensive to me as that is to you. Um, bitch, I, the thing, the problem with that is I don't necessarily, I don't necessarily make the judgment that being a bitch is totally wrong. Now, uh, to be honest with you, the majority of my best female friends were bitches. <laughs> they were, but I obviously love them. I did. That's why I was friends with them. Yes. So I don't necessarily see bitch as a bad thing. I've had many bitch friends. Um, and then my, this means different things. It could be it's just a lot of context so it could be mean a lot of different things to be a bitch but i don't inherently necessarily think that's a bad thing so when i say bitch i'm only half being disrespectful it doesn't have that full sting to it to me because i'm like that may or may not be a good thing that could be a lot of fun that could also be a disaster it just it depends and there's different levels of, of function functionality with um, being a bitch so just to clarify word usage that has been offensive to people in the past, you never asked me what I meant by anything. You just heard what you heard. And you were bad sociologists. I don't think you were really trying to hear me. I think you just wanted to be offended by something. But, um, you know. So I'm bringing this up. Um, like, my, yeah. <laughs> For anybody that was sensitive, realize, you know. Um, I do have that traveling. I've traveled to a lot of fucking countries, man. So sometimes you'll be like, oh, you have an accent or you sound weird to me. You don't sound like a Californian or whatever. And I'm like, at this point, my language has been so shaped. I've traveled to, I think, like 16 countries and like state, like a bunch of states and like, um, like a group of states. And, um, you know, and I've had so many foreign friends and s just so many weird pockets of places where there's other foreigners and cultural happenings that at this point, like, you know, like, for example, renegades, all kinds of traffic through renegades. Not that it was hugely, but, for example, or college being another one where you've got all these, like, different cultures coming together and, um, and shaping a new culture. So at this point... My language has been pretty shaped by a variety of things, and it's probably, I know it's lost a lot of you where you're like, I don't like that term, or I don't understand the context of her using that, or I've never heard that expression before. Uh, I like the cut off your J-I-B, you know, there's all kinds of weird shit out there. But, um, you know, um, I so try to understand me. I'm not trying to just be offensive, and I do mind that 
it's like how do you balance speaking as you being radically honest and just going look i am who i am but i'm not who you say i am <laughs> i'll just be totally me and that's totally fine and you can and that will be consistent or being like you know um, i don't know um Being just offensive to be offensive, which I do do sometimes when I'm in a really bad mood. And I'm sorry for that. That it really is an egoic hang up of mine where I just, I think I'm funny when I'm mad. In my defense, I am. <laughs> but not with everything that I say. That's the problem. Sometimes I'll just throw some stuff out. That's offensive. That's not funny. And then, but then, you know, usually I do say something that is funny. Yeah. It comes with that valley girl. I didn't say Valley Girls and Riot Girls are funny. Oh, they are. <laughs> oh, they fucking are. Oh, they are. So, um, yeah, that's kind of where that attitude comes from. And that's kind of, I don't try to exacerbate. I try to work on it. <sighs> I do. But then I think I'm funny. And that's the problem is I'm entertained by my own thoughts. I really am. It's shameless. It's shameless self-entertainment. <laughs> I'm a hoot and holler to me. Party one, fine, whatever. It's the quality of the party, not the my volume. So, anyways, um, yeah, that's the context of those words to me. But also, I'm not gonna break down every word, like the weird nuances that I say. Though I could, though I think that'd be an interesting tape. I mean, rad. I say rad which is short for radical, but it's like an 80s thing that trickled off. As you see, I still say rad. Yeah, that's rad. That's cool. Um, I don't really say that many weird thing, things. I don't know. There's California-isms in there, for sure. Uh, for sure. It's for sure. And, um, and there's a little bit of that draw. California kind of, like, we can kind of talk like a little bit slow or a little bit like spaced out or like you, we sound like we're stoned. We may or may not be, but we sound like it. So there's a little bit of that draw out. And uh, it took me a really long time to smooth out the valley girl from my upper intonation. Intonation. Did you just hear that? The upper intonation. That ex exactly. And it's... It, I started to annoy myself. I used to talk, not like a total outright valley girl, but pretty valley girl. And I'd be like, it's just, just like an attitude to be like, okay, like whatever. <laughs> yeah, okay, whatever, you know, like, and, <laughs> but one day I heard myself and I was like, God, you sound so dumb, dude. You're talking like you're stupid. And I'm like, stop doing that. So I deliberately tried to smooth that out. But you guys say I sound sometimes condescending i don't doubt that i do i think that that's <laughs> did i just sound condescending yeah no i don't doubt that you heard that that's probably because that's exactly what it sounds like there's a lot of sarcasm and there's a lot of like it's like I, but it, this is like a totally 90s thing i can't explain it we we're like we're like a shit talking generation we're like a, um we're funny we're like kind of like ironic we're like a little bit like philosophical we're like um have a little bit of this kind of like run off of the 80s edge you know and um we had technology we didn't have technology until later in the game so we had more time to socialize face to face um yeah so, anyways. <sighs> slang. Sociology of my slang. I can make more tapes on this, but the point is that my slang was developed throughout the years, whether it was in Marin up until the fifth grade or until, you know, cinema. 
um, until I was 18, or Santa Cruz being, you know, 18 to on and off for 10 years, and um, and Southern California in there as well. So, and then traveling around the world and traveling to different states and having foreigners as friends and catching there. So I have a lot of kind of. I don't think I have a one speak, but I'm telling you the initial intonation and foundations were like slight like kind of Northern California Valley Girl, not Southern California. No, not that bad. Not that obnoxious. No, like the Northern California Valley Girl. It wasn't a valley. Nice, nice area. Um, Bay Area Girl, but it's like how we, it's like how we talked. God. <laughs> I mean, God. Um, so, you know, there's always going to have that little bit of a throws people. They're like, are you making fun of me? I don't, I don't, I don't know. Maybe, like, <laughs> why are you asking? That's my question to you. I see what I mean. It has that kind of attitude. And, um, so I want to explain about my usage of the swears. Uh, but I do swear, and I do think it's important to maintain that. Not that you have to lean on it, but that I think s I think swears are a, a jolly good time. That's what I think. I think they really are. I think that um, swearing is really honest, and it doesn't have to be all the time. It doesn't have to be abusive, and it doesn't have to be aimed at anybody. But I think it's an honest expression of self, and I still do believe in that. And... Um, I'm probably over attached. I'm trying to lessen my attachment to it, that pride. Um, in then that line in the sand of saying, Are you an honest communicator or are you full of shit? You know, like and it doesn't mean if you swear or you don't swear you're full of shit. No, but it doesn't mean you're not. It inherently it, through studies, people that swear more tend to be more honest people. Studies have said. And in my defense it's like that meme. I swear because fuck you. <laughs> so anyways, um, yeah. And so that's where I'm coming from with it. I hope this explains words like bitch and cunt. But everybody just decided to take it like like the way that they decided to without any questions or basic sociology review of who I am as a person. Jeez. Sloppy work. <laughs> well done.